Ah, there we go. Okay, so um, we've talked about optimization, and we've talked about colors, uh, and we've talked about the image tag. So uh, now we're gonna put some things together and tie in some cascading style sheets and talk about backgrounds. Um, now, just philosophically, let me just say something, because this is kind of hard to grasp. Uh, HTML and CSS distinguish between a foreground image and a background image in a very major way. Um, an image or foreground image is considered content, and that's why we have the IMG tag, which is HTML. But when we talk about backgrounds for a web page, they're done not in HTML, but they're done in CSS because a foreground image is considered content and a background image is considered styling. Now, visually, the page may look identical. You could have a background that shows up on your page, or you could save that image and make it a foreground image, and to the user, they would see the exact same page. But in the code, they would be different because you use the image tag in HTML for a foreground image, but you use a background CSS property to specify an image or color for a background. And of course, you can have a foreground and a background, um, but the foreground is always done in HTML and the background is always done in CSS, even if visually to the user, there's no difference between the two. Because I could have a background of something with no foreground and therefore you only see the background, or I could have a foreground image of the same thing, and to the user, the web page would look the same, but the code would be extremely different. So that's why we use CSS for backgrounds, including background images and background colors of a web page or a piece of a web page, and the image tag for a foreground image, which is considered content. Does that make sense? Now you can style the content or foreground image by putting a box around it or changing its size and so forth. But generally speaking, that's the distinction that we make. Styling is backgrounds, content is foregrounds. So when we look at the CSS, you'll see how that works. Okay. Um, so now um, let's talk about some CSS and then we're gonna tie everything together. So um, am I sharing my screen yet? No, I am not. Uh, where's my share screen? Share screen. All right, desktop one. Uh, are you seeing my screen yet? Yeah, you seeing the screen? Okay, good stuff. Yes. Um, the way it's blocking my view, I'm not used to this bar. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is um, pull up. Uh, HTML help, which is that, that old CSS and HTML reference that I sometimes use. Um, and talk about backgrounds. If my slow connection can load htmlhelp.com. Come on, you can do it. Really? Is my connection that slow? Come on, you can do it. Kerchunk, kerchunk, kerchunk. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is pull up some, C some basic CSS code here. Um, so while that's, while that's loading, we are loading, right? Come on. Okay, here we go. Um, I am going to go to the CSS guide. Things seem very slow today for me, CSS properties. Okay, so um, color and background properties, okay? So uh, you see we have color, background color, background image, background repeat, background attachment, background position, and then background is a shorthand property for all those. So um, let's look at color for a second. So uh, let's see, so color. This is a CSS property. Now, if you remember, uh, where's that Word document? Oh. 
Um, what's your basic CSS syntax? Selector, open curly brace, property, colon, value, semicolon, and curly brace. That's your basic CSS syntax. Obviously, you can have multiple property value pairs separated by the semicolon, all right? Um, didn't need to capitalize that. So that's your basic CSS syntax. So keeping that in mind, color. Color is a property. Okay, let me pull that down. Now, by the way, do you remember I talked about the different ways to specify color? Here we see uh, the word blue used. Here we see hex code with two digits for red, two digits for green, and two digits for blue, and that's a moderate blue. And here we see a shortened hex code of, six, of three digits. Now, do you see the pound sign? Whenever you use hex code in CSS, you always prepend the six digit value with the pound sign, the hash, okay? So you not only use the hex code, you always put the hash in front of it. You don't put the hash in front of the, the name if you're using an English word, just the, just the hex code. So here we're saying all headline one should be in blue, all headlines two should be in that same blue, and all headlines three should be, well, actually that's not the same blue, it's a different blue. Um, and headline three should be in, it looks like some kind of um, green, right? So this is short for 00CC00, right? Um, so the color property specifies foreground color, which is generally what we call text color, right? So you've pro you may have already played with the CSS color property. It's just the text color, essentially, right? So when we say color in CSS, we mean text color, right? But backgrounds are different. So, um, actually, I don't want the shorthand property. Let's go back. Uh, I want... Let's start with background color. Okay, so background color is how you specify the background color of a whole page or any element on the page. You can have a background color of a div, a background color of an H1, the background color of a, an anchor, the background color of a list item, anything can have its own background color. The background color of body would be the whole web page, right? So here, we're saying that the background color of body would be white, and we're saying that H1s would be this um, some shade of blue, looks like. See that? So color specifies font color. Background color specifies the background of whatever it is, like the body Body would be the whole web page, okay? Now, background dash color is the full property name. You could just say background colon white using shorthand. Again, shorthand, we're gonna, we're gonna speak in longhand before we get into shorthand. So um, you'll see background just without the dash color, but um, if you're talking about background dash color, you're specifically talking about a background color. By the way, background image is background dash image. And here we see a background image applied to the whole web page, and here a background image applied to a pa all paragraphs. If you had both of these styles on the page, the background of the whole page would be this foo.gif image, but then the background of the paragraph would be this bg.ping, and that would be on top of the foo image, right? Because the more specific overrules the more general, or in this case, sits on top of the more general. So far, so good? Whenever you define a foreground color, which is just the color property, meaning you're defining the color of some text, you always want to think of foreground and background together because your contrast depends on the difference between the foreground color of the text, for example, and the background color that the text is sitting on. And if you don't have that right, it's going to be hard to read and will not be accessible to people 
that um, you know have trouble with viewing things that are not high contrast. So one of the elements of accessibility of your page is the difference between the color of the text and the color of the background. So these things do not exist in isolation. So you should, you should always think of when you're defining colors, what's the background color? When you're defining background colors, what's the foreground color? Because you don't want them too close if it's something that's read, that needs to be readable or legible, you want the user to be able to read the type and have high contrast between the two or that page will fail in your um, accessibility. Okay, now note a couple of things in syntax here. We have the selector body, and remember this is a really old reference and they capitalize the selectors. You don't, you know, the standard usage these days is to lowercase the selectors, doesn't really matter. But here we're saying the background dash image property takes this value. So see how it's defined. If it's an image, you have to say what the image is. And the way you do that, if you want to specify a background image, is with URL and then an open parentheses and then the path to the image and then close paren. Or you could have a full URL rather than a, uh, a path. By the way, this is an absolute path that starts with a slash, and you're generally not going to use um, absolute paths, but sometimes you do use them, and we'll talk about them in a little bit, a little bit later, maybe not today. But when you have a URL, it's just a full URL. Now, if that statement, or if these statements, are sitting inside of an external style sheet, then the path to the background image starts from inside the CSS folder. So you would generally have dot dot slash images slash blah, blah, blah. You understand that? Whereas if this background image CSS rule was in an internal style sheet, meaning it was in the head section of a web page, the path would be from the web page to the background image. So it would be something like images slash blah, 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 as opposed to dot, dot slash images slash blah, 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 because you're starting from the web page, not from the style sheet in the CSS folder. You see the difference? So Absolutely. in the exercise, you're going to do paths that are different because you're going to have an external style sheet where you're specifying some backgrounds and so forth, and you're going to have an internal style sheet where you're doing the same thing, and the paths will be different. Do you understand the difference between the two? Yes. Yeah. It depends on whether or not that style sheet lives in the web page head section or lives externally inside the CSS folder. I have a question. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Uh, so, on the is there supposed to so there's no spaces between the the URL and the images only between the brackets, right? Thank you, very important point. Yes, you see that, see where there's no space right here between the URL and the open paren? Yeah. The, the number one mistake that you will make is to put a space there. And if you put a space between URL and that open parentheses, it will not work. It will, it will it's incorrect syntax the validator will probably bark at you and the image won't show up. So usually spaces are not significant here. Like for example, the space here before background is not significant. The space after the colon, not significant. You don't need it, you could have it. The space here, not significant. You could have it or not. But the one place where the space is very important and you cannot have a space is after that URL before the parentheses. You cannot have a space there. That's the number one mistake you will make. So if your background doesn't show up, it's going to be because you have a space there. Got it? So now, let's put a background on a page. Um, let's, put, let's start by putting an image on a page. Okay, so I've got, let me, I'm gonna close Photoshop here. We're done with that for now. Um, I'm gonna go back to my Word. And I hate working on Word, just be so you can see this. Now, um, 
let's say I want to put an image um, here. And let's say I'm going to put this image, which I called x.jpg. I'm going to call it um, Shelly because that's it's an image of Shelly. I'm going to call it Shelly.jpg. I've got this image, right? Now, to put it on my page, I would use the anchor, I'm sorry, the um, image tag, right? IMG space source equals. Now, the path matters. Right now, I'm just going to say Shelly. Oh, shit, I'm in Word. Oh, Word is curling my quotes automatically. That will not work. This is why I don't like to work in Word, because I have to turn off the curly quotes. You have to turn it off in two different places in Word. It's a super pain in the butt. I'm going to go back to... Okay. Um, sorry, apparently if I try to change the size of this, it's going to crash. So um, can you all see that for now on your screen? You can. Um, yes. Uh, okay. So let's say I'm going to put this image on this web page. I will put it. Um, maybe I'll put it right here. So I'm going to say IMG space SRC equals. Um, and right now I'm just going to say, oh, did I capitalize Shelly? I ca okay. By the way, obviously you know that capitalization is important. I capitalized Shelly. I'm going to lowercase it because. Um, it's easier for me to remember things if everything's lowercase, but that, that would make a difference. So it's a lowercase. So I'm going to say Shelly.jpg. I'm not going to worry about the path yet because I'm going to keep everything on the desktop. Alt equals Shelly. Okay. So I'm going to save this beautiful web page as soon as my computer allows me to. Come on, you can do it. Wow, I don't know why it's so sluggish. Come on, baby, you can do it. Come on, let's get that save. Come on, there we go. All right. Um, I'm going to call this um, whatever exercise this was, X7, I think. Seven. Dot so, HTML. Okay, so I'm doing my exercise. Okay, so I'm gonna save it to the desktop. Oh my gosh, it's already 8.30, I gotta move faster. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, if I look at this in a web browser, hey, why not Chrome? Hey, we'll try Chrome. Come on, Chrome, where are you? Come on, Chrome. My computer, for some reason, is extremely sluggish. Uh, make, let's going to make Chrome go away. Let's go back to Safari. Here's Safari. OK. So if I view this in Safari, there's my image. OK. Nice, huh? Now, what do you notice? You notice that the image is on its own line. But it's on its own line not because it's a block level element, but because it's between a paragraph and a div. So it's going to be on its own line. But if I were to uh, copy that and put Shelly there again twice, save it and reload. Because image is an inline level element, it doesn't break the line unless I tell it to or I make it, you know. So um, there's two images that are exactly the same. Now, what if I were putting this online, um, I would have an images folder. And in the Shelly would be in the images folder. And now um, I broke it. And I don't see the Shelly's, but I do see Shelly Shelly here because the browser is showing me the alt text because it can't find the image. And the alt text said Shelly. Now, um, I need to fix my path. So um, here, it's source equals images slash Shelly. And if I save that and reload, Shelly comes back. Shelly comes back. Um, images slash Shelly. Did I save it? You misspelled images. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> and if you spell images right, 
then your path is correct. <laughs> Thank you. And Shelly comes back. Oh, and if you spell it right in both places, both images come back. I have to put the right path here. Images slash save reload. So um, the normal situation is your images will be the images folder on the server. And so you would have images slash whatever for foreground images. So far so good. Now, I can change the height and width that this displays at. I don't have to display it at the um, uh, uh, natural size. I could choose to change that size. Now, um, here we're gonna do some styling. So in the head section, um, I'm gonna say style and style. And um, yes, I'm missing, uh, let's, I'll put the type equals text slash CSS for good measure. Okay, so I'm gonna have an internal style sheet. Now, how would I um, put a background color on this page? Well, I would use the uh, body selector because it's the whole page. And now I'll say background dash color. As you saw, that's the um, uh, CSS property. Gotta spell it right, John. Colon um, yellow. Okay. I don't know what the hex code is for yellow, but I'm just gonna say yellow. It's gonna be a really ugly yellow, I think. Um, and I could save that and I can reload. And we get a, a very ugly kind of a yellow background. Background colors are fairly easy. I could copy that. I could say, you know what? I want my H1s to have a background color of red. Now this beautiful page becomes even more beautiful. Um, oh, H1, not HI. I think that was my typo. Yeah, okay. So everything can have a background. Uh, I could put backgrounds on any, any piece of this I want. Um, and I can also give background colors and or images to things. Uh, but right now you see how this is done and I'm, I'm styling the backgrounds here. So you don't do backgrounds in HTML. You only do backgrounds in CSS because backgrounds again are considered styling. Okay. And your image tag is HTML because foreground images are content. An important distinction. Now, um, Let's talk about height and width. I could also manipulate uh, the image in CSS. So if I use the image as a selector, it will select all images. Um, and let's say, um, let's say um, width colon uh, 450 pixels. Let's say I do that, right? Now, I save that and I reload. The image got bigger proportionally because I didn't specify a height. Um, if you only specify width or height, the image will resize and maintain the aspect ratio. It will not be tweaked. But if I also said, you know what? How about height 200? pixels. And I save that and I reload. Height to, how about 100 pixels? Because it probably already was 200 pixels. Then I can skew the image because I set the height and width different from its normal natural proportions, its aspect ratio. So you can do that. I mean, you generally wouldn't want to do that, but of course you could, especially if a homework exercise asked you to. But um, generally you would only specify the height or the width, or if you specify both, you would preserve the aspect ratio so, so you would do that mathematically so it made sense. But if you don't just specify height or width, it will preserve the aspect ratio. But if you don't, it will do whatever you say, okay? 
Now, let's say I wanted to change one image different than the other. Um, image is my selector, but if, what if I only wanted to select one of these two images to, to manipulate it with CSS? Um, what would um, what would I need to do to be able to select a specific image? I heard you all thinking it. Yes, I could give the image a class or an ID. Very good, John, or whoever thought that, right? Right. So if I go back in my HTML and I give this image a, uh, a class equals, um, um, I'm going to say blah for now just because my mind is a little fried. Okay. I've given one image the class of blah, but not the other image. So now I could say um, anything with a class of blah. Takes a different style. So now I'm only styling the one image and not the other. So I have two of the same image but I've styled one different than the other. See how that works. Um, you know, if I put a break between these two images, they'll be on their own line, which I think I want to do at this point. So back in my HTML, between the two images, I am just going to break it. Right there. Beautiful. So far, so good. All right. So let's say um, I wanted to place another image on a page. I would have to have another image. And wherever I put that image tag, it would place the image. Um, and the ex let me, let's go to the exercise at this point. I'm done with Word here. I don't really want Word. Let's get that out of the way for now. Um, and where's my Safari? Oh, I'm in it. Uh, okay. Um, so in the exercise, uh -oh, I'm all wigged out here. Let's try that again. Ah, reload this page. Something got wigged out. My browser's wigged out. There we go. Um, in the exercise, let's look at the things I ask you to do. We're going to put all this together. Images, color, and backgrounds. Okay, so um, let me just walk through the steps exercise first uh, as a summary, and then we'll do some of it. Okay, so I have some links. Um, image formats, you remember this chart? Oh, I'm sorry, this is on my, my uh, resources. Um, image formats, that's the chart. You remember that? Um, why is everything so slow? Okay, so that's references there. Here's the link to the uh, steps in Photoshop, just very quick step-by-steps for optimization. And these are other resources online. So here's what I'm asking you to do. Um, you need to start with a photograph and um, make it a, a, a photograph of yourself and save it as an optimized JPEG. And you know what optimized means. Um, let me put it this way. If this thing is anything bigger than, you know, 100 or so K, it's too big. Okay. By the way, the question, how big is too big of an image? There is no, there is no cutoff. There is no ideal. An image should never be bigger than X number of kilobytes because there's different, you know, you're going to have them at different sizes, different quality levels, um, different kinds of images compressed differently. So um, the bottom line is, Never put an image on a web page that you haven't optimized. Okay, that doesn't mean you have to do super optimization, but you don't put raw images right out of your camera or a source um, right on a web page. It's going to be too big. If it's if it's measured in megabytes, it's million times too big. If it's hundreds of kilobytes, it's hundreds of times too big. Okay, so you know, if if you have an image and it's a high quality image and it's a big size, yeah, maybe that's going to be hundred k or so. But most of the time, your images are going to be less than 100K. So if you're finding that your images are larger than 100 kilobytes, you really have to take the optimization a little more seriously. Okay? They should be optimized quite a bit. So um, 
there is no standard way to optimize. It's just a subjective thing. But try to bring that quality level down as much as you can before you can't stand the quality. Okay, and then bring it back up a little. Um, so um, yeah, I I've had people do baby pictures, pictures with sunglasses. I I don't care so much about that. It would be nice if it was a picture of you, so I could see your face. But try to make it a picture of you. Um, and um, a scanner is not available in the CTC anymore, so that's a bit of a problem. So you know what? Actually, if you need to use a picture that's not a picture of you, go ahead because there is no scanner to scan a picture of you in the CTC. So I think I'll have to relax a little the requirements here given that you don't have the CTC to use a scanner in. So we won't talk about scanning today either. Um, but you need four other images. So how many does that mean? It means you're gonna start with five different images. Now, some of the images, you're gonna put the same image on the page in a number of ways. Like I just put the same image on a page in two different ways, right? It was one image, but I displayed it two different ways. So that's what I mean about you're gonna have five different images, but some of them are gonna appear on the page more than once and perhaps styled differently, okay? None of the images uh, should be more than 400 pixels wide or 400 pixels tall. So that's, that's something I'm asking you to do. Um, you're gonna create a folder in your public HTML folder called images, and all your images from now on will be in the images folder directly inside your public HTML folder, okay? So, um, and that means your paths are going to reflect that. So you're gonna create a page for exercise seven, you're gonna have the validator links, blah, blah, blah. You're gonna have the standard stuff on the page. It's gonna have a title. You're gonna link back to the home page. Okay, all that's basic. Now, the page should display four different images, some of which will appear on the web page more than once. One image should be at two different sizes using the CSS height and width properties to do this. I just did that. I just showed you, I just did that a minute ago, right? Now put another image on the page also appearing twice. That is a relative link to your home page. So now let's talk about how do you make an image a link, okay? An image that's a link is sometimes called a button. Right? That's what a button is on a web page. A button is an image that is a link. That's all a button is. So how do you make an image into a link? You put the image tag inside the href. Very straightforward. So let me show you. All right. Um, let's say that uh, one of these Shelly images I'm going to make into a link to my homepage. Now, um, I have to find, there's, I'll make this first image a link. So before I do that, first I'll make the link. So I'm gonna make a link, standard a href, a href equals index.html. So yours will look like that because it's gonna be a link to your home page, right? Um, and as you know, when you make a link, you have an anchor and then you have a slash anchor. Right? And whatever you have between the two is your link. So if I did that and I saved that uh, and I looked at my exercise seven page, then um, somewhere, here it is, go home. And if I click on that, I go to my index page, except I'm not online, so it goes nowhere. Um, but yours would go to your homepage. Now, one thing you'll notice is because I put the link, uh, an anchor is an inline level element and an image is, in, is an inline level element, so they're on the same line. Now, you can see clearly now that the image is an inline element because it sits on the same line as the text. You see that? So if I wanted uh, that link to not be next to the image, I would have to break it. I put a break in there or put it in a paragraph or something. But what I want to do is make the image itself the link to go to the home page. So what I do is instead of having it say go home, which is what the user would see as the link, I literally take the image and stick it where the text go home would have been. I just put the image between the anchor and the end anchor. And now the image itself is a link. Very straightforward, right? Instead of text there saying go home, the image is there. And I save that and I reload. And now I don't see the link as text, but if I click on the image, 
it takes, well, it would take me home if I was online. So um, what you will notice if the image is a link is when I move the cursor over the image, it turns into the, um, the, the, the hand that shows you it's a link. See that? Whereas this image doesn't do that. Now, because I made the image a link, in some web browsers, it may put a blue border around the image. And in other web browsers, such as this one, it doesn't. So you may notice that depending on the browser you're using. Um, that's, that's a function of the browser's default styles, default style sheet in the browser itself. Because some browsers will say, okay, well, if an image is itself a link, we're gonna put a blue border around the image, much, in the, much like we would make the text blue with a line under it to indicate that it's a link. That's the standard you know, styling for a link, absent of any styling that you're doing uh, to overrule that. And the same thing with an image. If you make the image into a link, in some cases, the browser will put a blue line around it to show you that it is, in fact, a link. Now, you can control that behavior. You may want to put a blue line around it to show that it's a link. Now, in this case, it's not obviously a link because it's not like a button. Normally, if you're making an image link, it'd be like a button and the image itself would indicate to the user that it's probably a link because it looks like a button. In this case, I didn't make a button, I just made this image a link. But um, at any rate, it's very easy to make an image a link. You just put the image tag between the anchor and the end anchor and voila, instead of text, the image is link. Stuff fairly straightforward, right? Right. Okay, I'm glad you agree with me. Good, I'm, I'm gonna assume you agree with me. Now, um, going back to the exercise, which was probably in the other window, but that's okay. So I've shown you how to do some of this exercise. Let's keep going here. We got another 10 minutes. Um, Okay, uh, an image that's a relative link to your homepage. So um, I did that, your, your path will just say index. Um, no, your, the image itself becoming a link starting on the web page would just, yeah, would just say index. Um, you're gonna create an external style sheet. The external style sheet has to contain a minimum of two rules, one to set the background for the whole page, which I showed you how to do, and one to set the background image of an HTML element other than body, which I did for the H1. I showed you how to do that. So you already have seen how to do the first couple of steps. Um, now, the image must contain a third image that is displayed as a background image for the body element. Okay, how do we do that? Pretty straightforward. If you know the basic CSS, it's gonna work the same way it worked before. Um, I have another image. Oh God, this image is really weird. Uh, <laughs> I have another image, which um, is a copy of the current National Enquirer, which, um, oh, it's a launching preview. Yeah, let's just, let's put it in a new web page. I have another image that is not loading. Uh, okay, there it is. Um, okay. Coronavirus cures finally found, and surgical masks spread infection. You gotta love the National Enquirer. It's real factual news. All right, so this is an image. Um, and let's say that, okay, th this would be a terrible idea as a background image, but just to show you how this works, I'm gonna make this image a background image. And um, it's got some real long name, so I'm going to rename it, um, fake. So fake.jpg, I want that to be a background, right? So if I go back to my um, code and in my style sheet, I say, you know what? Um, I am going to make a rule that says body is the selector because it's the whole page and um, background image Colon, uh, fake that, oh, actually I'm gonna put it in my images folder. So I'll put images slash fake.jpg. Now this is gonna be a really terrible looking page. Um, but that, what am I missing here? 
Do you remember the URL with the parentheses? So you have to remember, you have to put URL in parentheses. I'm sorry, you have to put URL and then in parentheses without a space, you have to start the paren and then end it here. Um, so again, when you do a background image, you have to say URL, no space, and then put the path to the image within parentheses. Got it? Now, several things are gonna happen here. Oh, I have to put it in my images folder. Okay. <laughs> that is extremely confusing. Now, what you'll see is that a background image tiles to fit the screen by default. Do you see that? It's going to tile horizontally and vertically um, to fit the screen, to fit the window. So um, you can see it's starting to tile again here. Um, that is default behavior, which can be changed with the style sheet. But if you make it a background image, um, and the background image is smaller than what it's a background of, for this, this example, the whole page, the background image will just repeat or tile to fill the page by default. You can turn the tiling off. You can tell it to only tile horizontally, to only tile vertically, or to be centered uh, with no tiling and so forth with other CSS properties. Um, and those, uh, remember the HTML help that we looked at before? Um, did I make that go away? I made it go away, wah. Um, and for a, a quick uh, look at some of that code. Okay, so you see the background image we looked at before, how to do a background image, which we just did. Now, background repeat. If you wanted to stop the tiling, you can say, um, use the background dash repeat property. If you say repeat X, it will only tile horizontally. If you say repeat Y, it will only tile vertically. If you say background dash repeat colon no repeat, then the image will not repeat at all. It will just appear once. Background position. Um, if you wanted to center the background image in the middle of the page, you could say something like, where's the, it should give me the, uh, it doesn't give you the little example. Okay, you could say something like uh, background position colon center colon, uh, center, uh, if you just say center, it'll center horizontally and vertically. Or if you could say um, uh, uh, center, comma, top, it would center and be at the top. Anyway, you can play with these to, for positioning. I'm kind of running out of time, so I don't want to get too much into the weeds here. Let me look at the rest of the, um, oh God, that's ugly. Uh, let's John, see. John, can I ask you a question? Absolutely. Did you want the background of the body in the style sheet? Or it has to be. Yeah. Okay, so um, let me. Yes, but but you're going to create you're going to create a different style sheet for the home page. Okay. Um, for the home page or the exercise. Oh, let me just see if I asked you to. Oh, I didn't ask you to create a separate one for the home page. Let me just see. Um, oh, I asked you to add the picture of yourself to your home page. That's why I wanted the picture of yourself. You know, don't worry if it's not a picture of yourself since you're not going to be able to scan anything in if you don't have a picture of yourself. But if you can put a picture of, yourself, of your home page, do that. It has to be optimized. Oh, okay, no, yes. Yeah. So I didn't ask you for another internal style sheet. So it's going to be an external style sheet. Yes. So, so, my, course, question, so my question is, is the the body, the background image for the body in the style sheet? Yes, it has to be in the style sheet. And then one other element, like an H1 or an H2, yeah, exactly. in the style yeah. sheet. Yeah, like I did that right here. 
for example. Right, but that, but you're doing it in your HTML document, but just- Oh yeah, but, but I'm just doing that for expedience sake. Okay, um, I just wanted to yeah, make sure that yeah. was the case. That style section wouldn't be there. Instead, you would have an external style sheet. You would like- Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just as- Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, good. Sorry about the confusion there. No, no, no. Yeah. I just want to make sure. I was just sure. trying to save time by just yeah, doing No, it's okay. I just want to make sure I was following the instruction. But I think I've covered the basic stuff that you will need to do to do the exercise. It's basically putting some different images on the page and styling them slightly differently from each other. Um, and, and then putting also a picture on your homepage as well. Um, um, yeah, 857. Okay. Um, so here's where we stand right now. This is exercise seven, which means we're essentially we're a week behind in the exercises because um, we didn't do this that last week when things kind of fell apart. Um, and we didn't have a class meeting and I wasn't set up with Zoom and, and everything went to shit. So sorry about that. So um, here's the deal. We're a week behind on the exercises and what I'm gonna do is, um, uh, First off, if you haven't access, if you do not have access to Photoshop, um, see if you can find another program like GIMP or maybe a less, you know, there are a lot of graphics programs out there that you could play with. If you can't find one for free that will work for you, um, let me know. Um, I think what I'll do in the meantime is, I'm going to play with GIMP. I'll write up some directions on how to use GIMP to optimize images, kind of like Photoshop. Um, it will probably be fairly similar. It will just be different menuing, but the technique is going to be the same. You're going to basically change the number of pixels, and then you're going to try to reduce the numbers of colors. And so how that works in, in another program like GIMP, which is a free program, I'm not entirely sure yet. So. If you don't have access to Photoshop, um, I will give you an alternative. Um, but um, that will take me another day or two, uh, especially because my WordPress class is starting and I've got, um, I just added 11 people from the wait list. What a mistake. Anyway, um, <laughs> I've set up a 30 WordPress sites tonight. Um, but um, I, will, I will try to get some directions, some at least basic directions on GIMP out there in the next couple of days. Uh, okay, and I'll post those in the forum. Um, but in the meantime, do what you can do without Photoshop and, um, and then we'll work on it that way. I also want to get caught up. Um, so, um, let me see how we can do that. Um, we can either stay a week behind actually, um, because there's time built in where you work with this, the last month you're working on your final project where there are no extra exercises. So we could stay a week behind, but I'm going to see if I can, Maybe I can do uh, uh, a video of the next one uh, this week. Let me see if I can get to that so we can try to catch up. Um, but if we don't catch up, it's okay for now. Um, we'll, just, we'll just take that extra week at the end. Um, okay, yeah, I think that's all we can do right now. Um, I don't, I, uh, we're, you know, we technically go till 9.05. I wanna be respectful of your time. I don't wanna, take you any longer than we need to. So we're, we're essentially done. I'll answer a few more questions and then we'll stop. So um, the whole Zoom thing is kind of different, I know. Um, hopefully this is helpful. I will also um, massage this video and, and get it online in the next few days um, because I know not everybody could be here tonight and uh, you may find it useful to look back at it. But um, uh, yeah, images, color, and backgrounds. It's kind of fun. This Now we're getting into the more fun stuff. Um, the next thing we'll do after this is we're going to talk about um, layout. Uh, we will start by talking about the CSS box model and then uh, what are called CSS floats, which which is a basic layout technique to, to have text um, flow around an image on a page uh, and things like that. Um, so that's the next uh, the next section. Uh, but for now, we're on the basics of images, color, and backgrounds. Other questions? Yeah. If uh, we've already done exercise seven, do you want us just to hit a holding pattern for now? And you'll tell us all. You could, no, you could. Uh, the exercises are all up there. So you could okay. go to eight. Yeah. Okay. Give it a try if you want. Sure. Okay. Um, questions, more questions. Yeah, Leslie. The um, in step 
1.10 about the uh, border. Oh, I didn't cover that. Okay, great. Um, Thank you. Let's well, let's just, talk about borders. Are we using a property to both show the border and also hide the border yes and thank you that's we're one thing i didn't cover not, i forgot that thank we're you not yes. depending on what browser it is we're saying this one's on and that one's off. yeah and the reason i did that i put that in the exercise is so that you would understand that um you know you can control that blue box appearing or not appearing so um let's talk about borders now um we get more into borders in the next section as gary knows um oh no you did because you did this one not the next one um the box model, uh, let me show you uh, tutorials. The CSS box model. Um, I think we, I touched on this before in a previous class. Didn't I show you this before briefly? Yes. Well, this is the, uh, the, the, the subject of the next uh, exercise, part of, I mean, this is part of the next exercise. So, um, borders are part of what's called the box model, where you have the content, then you have padding, border, and margin. Um, now, borders are set with the border property. So, let's take a quick look at, uh, okay. Um, there's border-top, border-right, border-bottom, and border-left which could be shorthanded into just border. Um, oh, I can hear you, into just border. If you put border zero like that, it means your top, right, left, and bottom border have a width of zero, which means you have no border. So one way to stop a border from appearing is to do that. Straightforward, border zero, right? Um, that's, that's one way to stop a border from appearing by saying the border has zero width in top, right, bottom, and left, right? You could also say um, border top zero, border bottom zero, border left zero, border right zero, zero. Uh, or this is just the quick and dirty, all, all elements of the border, top, right, bottom, and left are zero, okay? So that will make sure there's no border. Now, what would your selector be? Here, we're saying the paragraph should not have a border, right? Now, everything can or not have a border, which means an image can have a border or not. An anchor can have a border or not. So if you had image for the selector and you had border zero, that means the image doesn't have a border. If you had anchor, if you had A here and border zero, it means links would not have borders around them. Now, generally speaking, unless you've specified a border around something, it's not gonna have a border. But that exception is sometimes if you make an image into a link, the browser will display a border. Realize that the border is not of the image, the border is of the anchor or the link. The whole point of the blue border that the browser may choose to display is showing you that the image is in fact a link. So actually image IMG might not be your selector here to make sure there's no border, it would be anchor, okay? So that's an important point. Now to make a border appear, you have to define two things, the border style property and the border width property. Now, by the way, the border style property can be set to none. The other way to assure that there is no border around something is to say border dash style colon none. So if you said border dash style colon none as your CSS uh, uh, declaration, then that would say no border. It's the same thing as saying border zero width both will make sure there's no border. So you can specify a border width of zero, or you can specify a border style of none, and you will not have a border. There are two different ways to say you don't want a border. 
Border style is generally used, though, to specify what kind of border you want. Do you want a solid line border? Do you want a dotted line border? Do you want a dashed line border? Do you want a double border, right? And here's this example shows you the top border is solid. The right-hand border is dotted. The left, the, the bottom border is dashed and the left-hand border is double. So you see those are different border styles. The border width of the top is one pixel. The border width of the right on that box below me is five pixels. The border width of the bottom is 10. The border width to the left is 15. Note that if you select a double for your border and you don't give it more than three pixels, more than two pixels, it can't do a double line. It needs at least three pixels to do a double line. Um, so this gives you some examples of how to play with borders. And remember, you might want to play with the border with the image as a selector, as well as an anchor as a selector, if the image is a link. So there's a difference between an image as a link and an image itself that's not a link. An image that's not a link, you can play with the border just by using image as the selector. If the image is a link, it's the anchor that you're worried about the border showing up or not showing up on. Is that helpful? Yes. So um, this gives you some examples on how borders work at the CSS box model tutorial, which is in my tutorials under styling and layout CSS box model. The other things that are helpful for this is the image file formats for the web and how to optimize images using Photoshop. And I will try to create a how to optimize images using GIMP. <laughs> um, and uh, I'll work on that in the next couple of days. Yeah, things were so much simpler when you could just go to the lab and use Photoshop um, or a scanner. Yeah, Leslie. Um, I just posted in the chat, but do you know anything about the um, Adobe software deal that I don't know, which is any day now? It's any day now. I guess you got the same email that I got from John, I'm assuming. Yeah. That yeah he was a, which, and that I, was, yes, that was last night or yesterday. Yeah. And, and I spoke to Spring on uh, Friday and I somehow got, and she didn't specifically say, but I thought that it would be today. But now... I don't know what the holdup is exactly. I just thought if you knew Thank you. Yeah, that. no, I, I, yeah. So, um, yeah, folks, um, Cabrillo is working on getting um, you access to the Adobe suite for the courses, for the digital media courses, including this one. Um, I was hoping that that would have happened by now. Yeah. I, I was actually the first person to raise it <laughs> some weeks ago. As soon as they announced the CTC was shutting down, that day I was like, uh-oh. Photoshop yeah. access. <laughs> and so um, uh, they have been working on it for a while, but you know, the, the, currently right now, Cabrillo is in a bit of a crisis mode because um, everything is happening all at once. And you understand the situation is kind of crazier than anybody imagined it would be right now. So um, I, I have patience with them and, I, and I've raised the issue a few times. They're very aware of it. Even Matt, the president of the college is aware of it. It's, it's a very much an equity issue because all students should have access to the software for the course. So um, hopefully, um, maybe as early as tomorrow, um, we will have news for you that you can actually use the Adobe Suite at home for the course without having to pay any money. Um, and so that would solve my problem with GIMP. You could just use Photoshop. In fact, um, I'm, I'm sure hoping that's gonna happen tomorrow. If it doesn't happen, I'll have to go to plan B, which is uh, setting up some GIMP directions. But Let's assume that the Photoshop is going to happen really soon. Fingers crossed. Um, actually, my screen is still being shared, so I can't really see everything I want to see. I need to, um, I need to go back to unshare my screen. This is blocking it. Oh, I see. There it is. Stop share. Ah, much better. Now I can see the chat window again. Okay. Yeah, when I'm <laughs> sharing a screen, I guess I don't really see the chat window unless I make it a floating palette. I should have done the X sign. So if you had questions in here, I didn't see them. Um, you can also save the chat window yourself right now, if you wish, by clicking on the three dots. Um, thank you. Thank you, Leslie. That, that was a good reminder. I forgot about that. Um, I'm a little fried just because we're all fried, as you know. Um, other questions?
Gary. Is there a way to uh, make your background border transparent so that you have the appearance of the absence of a border? That's you what could I actually technically do that. Um, okay. That's oh, what I okay. That's a that's a pretty interesting um, solution. Yeah. Now, if you if you do that, then it will still take up space. So it will change slightly the way things are spaced on the page. Where if you say border style none or border width zero, then it's as if it's not there at all. Right. So there's a slight difference between making it transparent depending on the width that you assign the border. Right. But of course, if you're making it transparent and then you're assigning it a width of anything other than zero, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's kind of like making it transparent doesn't really, anyway, you could, you could play with that. Okay. <laughs> it's a nice intellectual exercise. Yeah, uh, Gabe. Um, I was just going, going off of Gary's question there. W would that be, um, could you just use padding instead of a border in that situation? No, no, padding is not, yeah, padding is different. Padding is the space between whatever the element is and the border. So padding is the space around the image, for example, if you're giving the image a border. <clears throat> okay. So the padding is between the image or whatever you're giving it, whatever you're putting the padding around and the, and the border of that thing. I meant if you have no border, does the padding then, you, does, can you still have padding without a border? Oh, you can still have padding and you can give it a lot of padding and that will simply push things around it, away from it. Okay. But it's different than having a border. It's a different concept. Okay. It's padding is space. It's putting space around something. Where a border <laughs> is, you can is putting a border so you can see it. Unless you do the weird thing of making it transparent, which is kind of counterintuitive. But sure, whatever. You guys are weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Just thinking outside the box. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Oh. Just wondering Ooh. if you were awake. You know, I could pad this with puns too. I, just looking at the screen, it looks like we're the Brady Bunch. <laughs> yeah, a very disturbing version of the Brady Bunch. <laughs> Is the dinosaur the mom? Is that <laughs> okay? Yeah. Um, well, um, okay. Thank you for uh, this Zoom session. Um, uh, I'm not sure how the video part of this is all going to turn out, so um, I hope it turns out well. Um, I'll see you soon. And You're uh, awesome. Thanks. Have a good night. Yay. Be safe, okay. everyone. Wash, go wash your hands. Be safe. Wash your hands. Practice <laughs> yeah. social distance. Have fun uh, on vacation, Gary. Uh, thank yeah. you so much. I will. <laughs> yeah. And um, um, also, um, the people that couldn't make the Zoom session, uh, they may need a little uh, help in the forum. If you happen to see a question posted by them and you can answer it, feel free to do that. Um, and um, I will see you guys later. Thank you. Bye, sir. Bye, Bye everybody. Bye. Take care. Bye. 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 Remember, if you want to save the chat, click on the three dots before I close this out. So I'll give you a second to do that. Then I'm going to end the meeting and you'll all go away. Oh. That's how we became the Brady Bunch. <laughs> Next to the dots. word file. Oh, the lower okay. right hand corner of the chat okay. window. Yeah. Got it. Thanks. That's how you can, if you want to save the chat, sometimes it's handy to save the chat. Cool. Have a good night, guys. Bye. Bye-bye.